Tonight in Raleigh, North Carolina, demonstrators are set to gather to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Moral Monday rallies. The events were launched back in 2013 when 17 citizens walked into the General Assembly to protest budget cuts they said targeted the poor and working class in the state. Today's event will honor the work done in the decade that followed and recommit to future campaigns. Joining us now, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign and the president of Repairers of the Breach, Reverend William Barber. Thank you for being on with us. Reverend, thank you so much. You know, um, you. there are many things we can look at over the past decade, the past 15 years, where there's been progress. Uh, Reverend Al uh, was talking about how Unemployment among black Americans is at 5% an all-time low. Uh, how unemployment is lower with black men uh, than white men right now. Uh, and yet income disparity, it seems, uh, continues uh, to, to, to grow. And the answer for one party is cut, cut, cut uh, when it comes to helping the poorest among us. Talk about uh, the first moral uh, the, the 10th anniversary uh, of Moral Monday and, and what you've been able to accomplish over this decade. Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Meek. And good morning, Reverend Al. You know, when we look at Moral Monday that happened 10 years ago in North Carolina, we had a super majority to come into the General Assembly because of redistricting that was not stopped by the Justice Department. And in the first few weeks, they decided that they would block uh, health care expansion, Medicaid expansion, they would attack the LGBTQ community, block living wages, block unemployment uh, increases. And then in April, they decided they would go after health care, I mean, voting rights as well. And what people decided was every crucifixion needs a, a witness, even if you're in the minority. And so 17 of us, built on seven years of organizing what we call the Forward Together Moral Movement, went into the General Assembly and said, listen, we are here to say that um, health care and voting rights and living wages uh, are, are moral issues. Of that 17, interestingly, uh, seven of them were young people, and they arrested us. And from there, it grew and it grew until over 100,000 people were in the streets in January of 2014, the largest sustained movement at a state house. But more than that, um, 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 Joe, we won uh, in voter suppression. We beat them back through this moral fusion movement, bringing together white people from the West and so-called conservative state and black people from the Eastern uh, um, so-called black belt state. 60% of the people that came together were white who got arrested. 16% were Republicans, uh, Eisenhower Republicans, uh, Teddy Roosevelt Republicans. We sent an extremist governor home the next year uh, who they thought would easily get back in office. We um, created the atmosphere so that just a few weeks ago, um, Roy Cooper could sign Medicaid expansion. Uh, when we started Medicaid expansion, the poll, Medicaid was down in the poll. By the time we, we finished and they saw doctors and young people and all willing to even go to jail to challenge these MR issues, Pete, the polling changed. And what we saw is that moral fusion organizing can, in fact, work in the South. You know, Joe, if the people would look at it today, we have some terrible numbers. Po poverty is the fourth leading cause of death. In North Carolina, 40 percent, 7 percent of people are poor and low wealth. Uh, uh, One million people uh, are without health care. Uh, Two million people make less than $15 an hour. But inside of those same numbers is where you can organize. If you organize 4 percent of poor and low wealth voters in Florida, you can change any at-large election. If you register and mobilize 19 percent of poor and low wealth voters in North Carolina, you can shift and change any election. If you do 7 percent uh, in Georgia, and over and over again, what we are seeing is that if we bring people together in a third reconstruction moral movement, uh, it can fundamentally shift. We're now working in 30 some different states and our polling actually shows in our study we did called Waking the Sleeping Giant, even among young people, one of the things that they say is, nobody talks to us and nobody puts the issues together. It's, it's not about dealing with racism over here and poverty over here. It's about saying that there are interlocking injustices we must challenge together as Americans. The same people against vote, voting rights are the same people against uh, um, health care. The same ones that vote against health care uh, vote to rate cut taxes for the wealthy and raise it on others. The same people that do that block um, criminal justice reform. The same ones that do that 
uh, uh, block living wages. So if they are cynical enough to be together, we must be smart enough to come together in a moral fusion movement. And when we do that, people get excited and, and, and they're willing to change it. We can break through even in the South. And that's why our movement is, is c continuing to work. Uh, Bishop Barber, congratulations on 10 years. Uh, l let me ask you this. Uh, as you know, uh, last week, Nash Action Network had this convention and heads of the civil rights groups in AACP, Urban League, and others. We are dealing with August 26th National March and other issues around voting rights and racism. But in your work in, in the South and around in the faith community, have you seen any of the white evangelicals, the white church as a conservative church begin to gravitate toward these common moral issues that you raise because uh, we've seen uh, some evidence of, of coming together of black church and others and liberal mm -hmm. churches. But what about the evangelicals? What about those that yeah. are blessing the use of guns and blessing uh, this resurgence of, of in right. my opinion, racism and, and uh and, 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 and other biases that we're facing. Well, you know, Rev, that's always been around, whether it was the slave religion versus the, the, the Christianity of Frederick Douglass, uh, whether it was those who supported uh, Frederick, um, um, Franklin Roosevelt versus those who didn't in terms of the faith community. But here's what we are finding. Number one, we did a study called Waking the Sleeping Giant. said the number one reason most people don't vote, even poor whites, because nobody ever comes and talks to them. I mean, I, we've been in eastern Kentucky, east Tennessee. I did Palm Sunday last week, Rev, in, in in Tennessee, in the mountains, in front of a, 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 a plant that Joe Manchin owns, up in the mountains. What we are finding is that, yes, people are coming together. Last summer in August, we put over 150,000 people in the streets, 3 million folk online. We had 25 different religious bodies to support that effort and over 400 other organizations. And what we are finding is there is this moral coming together of people across these lines. We also are finding that most poor and low-wealth people, when they vote, they don't vote against their own interests. Most of them just don't vote because they've been so turned off. In the last election, we touched over 8 million poor, low-wealth, um, uh, infrequent voters. Data is coming out now that says that they're, they're, those voters voted 13 percent higher for progressive candidates. So we are finding across the board, Unitarians, Christian Church Disciples of Christ, Methodists, Presbyterians. We even have a group called Red Letter Christians, Red, and they are part of our part of the movement. These are Christians to people who used to be with so-called white evangelicalism. They read the Bible and found the red letters don't say that, which means Jesus don't say that. They are mobilizing with us. They were with us last week in Nashville. I'll give you a quick story. We went to Nashville for Moral Monday by invitation. We put black and white and brown and Latino and Jews and Muslims and Christians in the state with mothers from the school and her mothers of children from the school where the babies were killed and other people who were impacted went into that General Assembly in Tennessee in full vestment. And they were planning on voting to, to pass um, guns being in the hands of teachers and custodians. When they saw that fusion coalition ready to lay down and, and, and submit even to arrest, they changed the vote. They would not vote. They would not vote. And so we know every time in history, when moral fusion movements come together, whether it's the first reconstruction of the 1800s or the second reconstruction of the 1960s or the third reconstruction that we're in right now, fundamental change can happen. Reverend William Barber, thank you very much. We appreciate very much your coming on this morning. Thank you.